Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tears in Tool Talk, a podcast that's dedicated to celebrating women who are showing up from within the struggles of the everyday life we're in right now to connect with their magic and color. I'm here with my friend, Jamie Lieberman. I'm so excited to have you here, Jamie, and I would love for you to tell everyone just a little bit about yourself. Uh, Gina, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jamie Lieberman. Um, I'm a lawyer uh, and I own a law firm called Hashtag Legal that focuses on working with entrepreneurs. I'm a mom. Um, I have two boys. Uh, I live right outside of New York City, right on the Hudson River. Um, and I uh, am just so happy you asked me to be a part of this. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here. Um, I I will also just tell everybody that um, you're my trademark lawyer, and so I've worked worked with you for the past couple of years, and I'm so grateful to have found you and be able to um, work with you through different projects and different things that are happening in my business. So thank you for being a friend and for being an amazing, um, totally outside the box lawyer like I've never met before. <laughs> so thank, <laughs> thank you for you. that. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we start every show out with an even when, especially then moment. And these are the tears and tool moments of life. And for anyone who's just joining us for the first time today, an even when, especially then is um, where we say something positive or something that we like about ourselves. And then we follow with a detour, something unexpected. And then we end with especially then, because we wanna make sure that we're acknowledging that magic from within the messier parts of life, which are happening all around us, especially during this pandemic right now. So I know I reached out to you ahead of time to ask you what your tears and tool moment was. We'd love yes. to hear it, Jamie. Yes. So I love this. I've given this a lot of thought because I think it's really important. So mine is I am powerful even when I feel like I'm juggling about a thousand different balls <laughs> between my kids and my work and my family and the pandemic, and I feel like nothing is going right, I know that I can at least sit in the fact that I am still doing the best that I can. So I, um, I like that a lot because I feel like that is a very, I feel like we all sometimes feel a little bit powerless. So I remind myself, nope, you are powerful. <laughs> Oh my gosh, especially then. That is perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love this idea too of juggling all these different balls. It's a different world we're living in right now. Yeah. It's interesting because the pre-pandemic, I also felt like I juggled a lot of balls. I traveled a lot for my job um, and for my business. And so I was very, I had a lot of that mom guilt of being pulled from, you know, I, I'm going on this trip. I enjoyed the travel. I miss my kids. Am I missing something big? How do I juggle that all? How do I make those decisions? So I certainly felt it. And oddly, now that I'm here, I feel it even more because I feel like, although I'm not going anywhere, there's still so many things going on and so many things that we're trying to sort of keep afloat during this crazy time that um, it, it didn't go away. So it turns out it wasn't the travel. <laughs> it's just running a business, being a mom, having a family, wanting time for yourself, um, which is harder to get now. Yes, I, I'm finding that 2020 has a way of opening our eyes. I love that you said you found out it wasn't the travel because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to sit with that feeling and to, to really pay attention to it with everything that's happening, I think is uh, inspiring to all of us to know that that's a normal part of life that we you know, are going to go through these things that, um, especially during the pandemic that are, that are just awakening these different feelings and emotions that we're having. So thank you for your vulnerable heart with that one. Sure. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to dive into the skirt from the moment that it showed up at your place. And I was just reading the text that accompanied the photos again, uh, right before we came on live and I just, what did you say? Um, you talked about like crossing the river and about the experiences that you've had. And so uh, I would just love to hear from the moment that package arrived, how you were feeling. And then um, from the moment that you sent it to the next person, which was Winter, who uh, you know just shipped it 
to New York, ironically. Ah. It's fine. <laughs> it went to Utah and then it came back. So it's crisscrossing. So yes. we opened it and it's this small box, right? And you, I opened it and it's in a bag and I didn't actually know it was the skirt. Like I knew it was coming, but um, I order a lot of things online. So you <laughs> never know what's going to show up in my apartment. So I opened it up and I have two boys that are elementary school age and they're like, what did you get? What is it? And I opened it and I pulled it out and it just expanded, right? Like it just <laughs> takes this life. It's huge. And it's a little heavy, like it's heavier than you think it is. And my kid, my boys were like, oh my God, <laughs> what is that? And my, my little one was like, can I wear it? I was like, 100%. I'll actually have to send you the pictures of him in oh, it. Oh, good. He was so into it. He's like, I need to put this on. So he was like, in the middle of like this just massive amount of rainbow tool. So we do live in an apartment and don't have a lot of extra space. So my husband was like, where's this going to go? <laughs> so we yes. ended up, we haven't, we have like sort of an extra bedroom and some extra space. So it lived um, on top, like near my Peloton for a while <laughs> because I was supposed to get the pictures and then it got rained out and I really wanted to be outside. So it just kind of like laid flat and had its own space and everybody's life in my apartment was threatened. I'm like, if you touch it or look at it or go near it, you're going to have to move somewhere else. So everybody <laughs> thankfully left it alone and it just sort of hung out there and we left it there. It was safe. It was good. We knew we were fine. And then um, the day before the pictures, because I finally got the date, my photographer was ready to go. I was like, oh, I got to like, put it on. Cause I hadn't put it on. I just sort of laid it flat and let it set kind of like, cause it has to like, it, it's a living, breathing thing. I feel like. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so I had to let it like fall out and figure out how it rested and do its thing. And so I started just finding stuff that I was going to wear. And so I figured it out. I tried it on. I was like, all right, I got this. And then I texted my photographer who happens to be a good friend of mine. And, um, I was like, all right, we ready to go. I'm like, we have, we walk everywhere. I, I live in Hoboken, New Jersey. It's a city. We walk everywhere. And I texted her. I'm like, I have to drive. I can't carry this. Like it was too big to carry anywhere I was going. Cause I was where I was, was about, um, it was probably like a 15, 20 minute walk to get from my apartment to where we were shooting. I live in uptown Hoboken. It was downtown. And so I was like, I'm gonna have to drive. <laughs> so we put the, we put the skirt in the back of my car. We drove downtown. And then the two of us actually carried it through the streets of Hoboken in our arms, like in front, like straight across. Cause I didn't want to wear it. Cause you can't wear it and walk around in it. It's just too. So then we, we eventually, it was very, very funny. So it was a very, I don't know. I felt like it was like the sort of added part of my, my family <laughs> that was in my apartment. Yes. <laughs> people do have experiences where they feel like there's an energy to the skirt too. Uh, yeah. And that it almost gives you a permission to just own all of your own color, you know, and then it gives permission to other people who are, uh, uh, before we hit record, you were talking about, I'll let you go ahead and tell people. Yeah. About so, how, uh, so we took pictures on Hudson river, um, overlooking the New York skyline. And that is one of the cool things about living where I live is every single day I get to see the skyline. And, and I will say that, you don't get bored of it. It's just so magical. And, and my heart really belongs in New York city. So it was just, it's wonderful to be able to live here. And so we went on a, one of the piers in, um, in Hoboken and it's a wide open green space, loads of people, even during the pandemic, because it's so much space, they're just like in little groups, you know, trying to have some sense of like, I want to see my friend and we're going to do it outside. So we're sort of standing at the edge close to the water. Um, and then the skirt, I put the skirt on and you could just see people are like turning and they're looking. I had people like Snapchatting it or TikToking it, like just as we were taking pictures. And it took us a little while to sort of get the skirt. Like I put it on and then we had to like, and there was, it was really windy, which you can see in my pictures. One of the ones was awesome because it got really windy, but the skirt would move. And then we were trying to like get it. And then eventually we were like, let's just go with it. Like, let's just let the skirt and my hair and it just go. And so we were just walking and she was like, walk towards me, do this. Like there wasn't, it didn't feel like uh, like I've done a lot of photo shoots, you know, for my business and stuff. And it didn't feel like I was like sitting and posing. We were just like playing with the skirt and having fun with it. Um, oh. And I was probably doing, and it was a little bit cold. So I was in the tank top and 
And I was like, all right. And I was, and then all of a sudden I wasn't cold anymore. Like it didn't matter. We were having so much fun. So I was probably, we probably shot for like 15, maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, and then the skirt came off. I was very sad. And then we carried it back to the car. <laughs> it barely fits in a car either. You know? yeah, it was, so it, it just spreads. It's pretty cool. It take, <laughs> this is kind of a neat analogy, which you may use, but it sort of takes the space that you'll give it kind of like us as women, right? Like as a woman, like you're sometimes very cognizant of like how much space am I taking or how big am I? How loud am I? Am I allowed to be that way? And so the skirt will literally just expand into the space that you give it. Um, And I sort of felt the same way, like about us, right? As women that we just sort of, we should take that big space (laughs) without apology. Oh my gosh. And with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, that is so important, I think, for us to remember. that, oh my gosh, that the skirt is, Jamie, everything you just said, I can't even talk. Um, <laughs> I, I totally love the way that you're viewing your experience with the skirt and you're sharing with us, because I think as women, we do sometimes, um, we do tend to hide in the shadows from time to time and uh, sort of forget who we are like at a raw core um like this color that we're born with and so this idea of the skirt expanding out and making space um and the skirt is changing as it goes from woman to woman it it it, um it's you know it's almost like it's not thinning out but it's it's it it actually is expanding the longer that the the movement goes on and no one could have expected that so for you to say that it's like the skirt is actually doing that as it visits each person. So thank you. That's beautiful. Oh, good. That's sort of how I felt about it. But I feel like, um, you know, when you're kids and I think generally, generationally it changes, right? Like, I don't know that we are putting this on our kids. Maybe some, maybe some young girls feel this way too, but just in, I'm, I'm in my mid forties. And so like, we were sort of, you know, taught to be a certain way, um, I talk a lot about this because negotiation is a big topic that I like to lecture on and talk about. And a lot of times, particularly with women, we, I, we find ourselves apologizing for what we're asking for. We find ourselves, you know, not wanting to be too loud, not wanting to be too colorful, not wanting to rock that boat um, in a way that sometimes our male counterparts don't really think about that. <laughs> like there were definitely times when I was much younger, maybe in my 20s, where I was like, wow, I was too loud. I have a very big personality. I'm not shy at all. And so sometimes, when I was much younger, I'm like, oh, I was too much, always too much. Like, how could you be too much? You are you, you are perfect, like just you. And so I think the skirts are really good, kind of a fun analogy for it. Cause some people may be like, that's a, that's a lot of skirt, <laughs> but it's not too much. It's perfect as it is. Oh, I, I totally agree with that too. Like I, I'm having memories of my own teen years and go, you know, my twenties and things like that. And we really do. Um, I can remember someone saying like, what kind of message are you trying to send? And it, it, it really like, I absorbed that, I, you know, like and I, I kept that in my body, in my mind. And, and um, you know, it, it takes a long time for you to figure out, like, I, I want to bring my message out into the world my way. And hopefully other people can connect with that. But yeah, I, I think it's really important that I love how you said, um, as far as like generations go, like, I hope that my daughters are able to see my connection, you know what I mean? So that we're able to yep. sort of set and not just my daughters, but young girls everywhere who are, are wanting to, um, you know, feel like they have this space, like you said, with the skirt to sort of shine in their own way. So, yes. So speaking of uh, being younger, I'm wondering what you wanted to be when you were a little girl, if it matches up with what you're doing now in the world. Um, I'm always curious to, to hear people's answer to this. Um, no, <laughs> it does not match up. So when I was young, very young, so I never wanted to be a lawyer. And in fact, I didn't even go to law school until five years after I graduated college. So law school was never on my radar. It kind of happened. Um, and it was the best thing I ever could have done at that time. So it was obviously the right time when I was very little, I wanted to be an engineer, um, which I ended up going to school for engineering. And I also wanted to be a photographer. 
And I ended up taking photography classes, but realizing that I didn't want to do it professionally. So I just happen to love taking photographs and I do it as a hobby. And I have, I think I have like 40,000 photographs on my phone. <laughs> so every time I upgrade my phone, I'm like, I need more memory, but um, I'm constantly taking pictures of my kids and of our family. And like, it's just, I love, I love taking pictures. So I thought I would do those two things. Engineering for me, I was just really good at math and science. And when you're a girl, when you were a girl of uh, my age and you were good at math and science, everyone's like, oh, you have to go do that for a living. <laughs> and so I don't think I ever actually wanted it. I think it was just because I had that gift that I was sort of smushed into it. And when I started to do it, I was like, oh my God, I hate this. And it was, yeah, I hated it. I really, so I ended up switching and moving to, um, I studied engineering, but I also studied economics because I was like, I want to, I need to figure something out. I didn't know who I was. And that's why, you know, choosing what you're going to be when you're 18 in college is really challenging. Um, so I don't regret that I studied it, but I never did anything with any of those degrees absent just getting a degree that I could say I had. Wow. Yeah. I, I love that you're saying too, that because you were good at that, one thing you were kind of smooshed into it. And I think that that does happen. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited that, um, you're my trademark lawyer and you went, <laughs> you, I found my you, way, you found your way. And this is what, you know, what your passion is and what you love. I think what I was able to do, I mean, certainly having a, um, I guess I'll say a math brain. That's what we, my older son is very good at math. And we always are like, look at your math brain. And he loves, he loves math. It's exciting. He loves to do puzzles. My math brain, I guess, really helped me as an attorney because there is a gigantic, I believe there's a huge correlation between the logic of math and science that really makes an attorney good because I have to have that same kind of analysis and logic. So it's been really helpful in that way. But what I, what I did was I took my legal practice and I work with creators and creatives and people who do, they are not your traditional sort of business owners. I work with some of the cool, I mean, I work with you. I mean, your business is so cool. I work with some of the coolest people though, with some of the neatest expertise. Like I work with tech companies and I work with people creating these cool apps and I work with people who are like just trying something new and, and we sort of go in it together. So that's my love is just working, helping people grow something um, and helping people who are doing something kind of revolutionary, kind of different, um, going out on their own. There takes, to be an entrepreneur, it takes a lot of courage. Um, and so I, that's where I found my excitement and happiness um, in what I do. So while I, I like, you know, doing trademark stuff, what I really like is the, what it means. It's, you know, like when I help someone with a contract, when I help someone with a tough privacy issue, like it just means that I'm helping them like grow and protect their business and I'm a partner with them and I'm, I'm helping them. And that's, that's really what I love to do. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. I know that, um, my kids were looking at a Reese cup package. Um, and when I say kids, I mean like 16 to 22 at this point, but, um, and we were messaging you like, what does this mean with Reese and the color? And um, so, yeah, it's, you do cool work. And we were excited that, that you were able to help guide us through <laughs> those questions. Those were fun questions. <laughs> they were, it was like, just from like a kid brain, you know, yeah. like, wait a second. <laughs> You know, so thank you for, for answering those questions for us recently. Yeah. Yes. So um, I'm wondering who, who is inspiring you right now in the world? Like who um, is inspiring Jamie Lieberman? Oh my gosh. Well, my hero um, is and was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She, yeah, I, I still can't talk about it. <laughs> she, uh, she was and has always been one of my biggest heroes. Sandra Day O'Connor as well. I had the privilege of meeting both of them, um, seeing them speak at one time or another. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh. I was so nervous when I met Sandra Day O'Connor that the thing I said to her is you have really soft hands. I'm, I cannot, <laughs> it up. I shook her hand. I'm like, Oh my God, your hands are so soft. And I was like, Oh my God, that just came out of my mouth. Yeah. She's oh like, my goodness. She's I like, love I, it. she goes, I moisturize. <laughs> uh, is that what she said? <laughs> oh, so she my best kind. friend, from, my best friend from law school was dying next to me. She's like, I can't believe you. I was like, I don't know. I just, I blurted it out. I'm not, I'm not graceful. So, um, oh, yeah, they, they were, I mean, 
you just trailblazers in the most classic of all, like, and they were so classy and so smart and uh, unapologetic. And I just, so that they are two women who definitely inspire me um, just to keep pushing, you know, so particularly now. <laughs> oh yes. It's more important than ever. Yes. Yeah. All right. So where can people find you? I know that you have some really exciting things happening because I follow you on social media. So like yeah. just this week, I know that there are exciting things happening in your yeah. world and in your business and what you're bringing out into the, the community and all that. So I would love for you to tell people uh, where they could find you and mm -hmm what you have going on right now. Yeah. So, um, our law firm is hashtag legal. So our website is hashtag spelled out dash legal.com. Um, and we are a full service law firm. We do everything from business formations, um, to contracts, to intellectual property, privacy website terms. So we sort of act like outside general counsel to our clients who um, just need help from time to time. Most of our clients don't have lawyers on staff, so they just sort of need to know someone's kind of in their back pocket um, when they need us. And so we really take pride on that. And I love the relationships. I've met some of the greatest people from my work. Um, we also just launched courses, which you're talking about. Um, the hashtag legal is now offering courses. It's called the unbusiness school. Um, and we've launched five legal foundation courses that, um, if you're just starting out or you're not sure, like you don't know what you don't know. And you frankly don't even think you're ready to talk to a lawyer yet. These will give you the foundation in your business when you're starting, or maybe you've been going for a while and you're like, I just need a little bit more information so you can figure out when is the right time to talk to an attorney. So we have those and you can find them on our website as well. Um, and you can find us on social. Um, Instagram is my favorite. <laughs> we are yes. most active there and that's hashtag un spelled out underscore legal. Uh, and we do lots of fun stuff. It's not just kind of like goof. We we're pretty goofy on Instagram. We have a lot of fun with it. So we definitely love new followers and we provide a lot of information too. So that's a great place. We're on Facebook too. Um, and I do have a YouTube channel that is grossly underutilized and you can find me there at Jamie Lieberman rocks. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your heart and uh, sharing the magic of your experience with the skirt. I'm so thankful. Thank you. It was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Have a good day, Jamie.